Yes, hello everyone and welcome to all our West Australian football fans to another edition of Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. The season now moving into August and the race for the finals heats up and it's a big, big round, round 17. And all games are live, free and in full on the AFL app. It's a big, big weekend of football. We can't wait. Paul Persick with you in the back chat studios and alongside me, Mark Foreman. Hello, Forey. Big round, round 17. The finals race really hotting up. G'day, Paul. Yeah, it is. I'm excited. It's going to be a, a, a really good finish to the uh, 2023 season. And, uh, you know, look at the top five. It's it need look no further to see how close this competition is and um, separated by just two games from first to fifth. And with a log jam of three teams on 40. So, yeah, it, it's every game carries so much significance. It's going to be an awesome, awesome finish well, in this one last game, month. Well, one game in particular carries the biggest of them, and that's uh, East Fremantle and Claremont up at the Wacker on uh, on the Saturday, which is, by the way, live on Channel 7 as well. That could be an early final when you look at it, maybe a finals preview. Yeah, and, the, you know, we start to talk about these eight-point games now because particularly when, you know, teams playing each other, vying for the same spot is... Just huge. And that, yeah, that's going to be an absolute ripper. Looking forward Certainly to it. Certainly will be. Both that. teams, uh, you know, with a few clouds over our injury as well. Um, will Milan Murdoch return for East Fremantle, Claremont? They're needing to bounce back. They want to avoid three losses in a row. That game is going to carry a lot of intrigue, especially for the team that finishes higher on the ladder. Yeah, and we'll go a long way to deciding that sort of double chance. You'd almost think that, yeah, I've made, perhaps too early to call it, but you'd almost think that the winner will, you know, almost certainly get that double chance and it leads the loser scrambling. So the, these are the, yeah, these are the games that we shift our focus to and, and carry so much significance. Absolutely. Now, in just a moment, we'll be speaking to the spectacular forward from the Perth Football Club, Samuel Stubbs. But we just want to remind you that every game live, free and in full on the AFL app in round 17. And also we have socials in operation, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Give us a big thumbs up or let us know in, uh, in the comments below what you think of the episodes and what you think is uh, going on in the WAFL. We really do appreciate it. This is Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. Now, Forey, Perth are coming off the bye. They are facing West Perth over in Joondalup, which would also be a must-win for West Perth. They want to keep on winning, but the Demons, they want to have a big say and cause a real uh, end to that uh, finals dream for West Perth as the reigning premiers. And one of the players is really going to have a big, big say on this game. He's one of the most spectacular forwards in the WAFL competition. I speak of the man who wears the number 23, Sam Stubbs. He joins us on the show. Sam, welcome to you, mate. Hey, guys. Great to have you How here. You going? going very well. Great to have you here on the show, Sam. Uh, perfect time to come off the oh, bye. Uh, what was the um, what was the morale of the team in that week off, especially now that you're going to be facing a real big challenge in the reigning premiers in West Perth? Yeah, it was a good little break, a um, bit of a reset again, and get ready to sort of hit the last four games of the year um, as good as we can. So we had a couple of days off and um, got to go out and do our own sort of running programs by ourselves. As well. And then we went and ran some junior clinics, which were real good to get out in the community. Um, so, yeah, we're refreshed and, you know, looking to hopefully take a couple of scalps to finish the year. Sam, obviously, you know, probably not the season you hoped for and, and not playing a role in finals this year. What, what gets you up and about for these last few games? And what's, what's the message from Peter German as to what you want to achieve? Yeah, obviously, you know, missing finals isn't isn't what we want. Um, but as a individual and team focus now, we just sort of want to sort of treat this last four weeks of the final series for ourselves. Like we've got four games to go. You know, you play footy to enjoy it and love mm -hmm. it. So <clears throat> go out there and you know enjoy it. Try um get our systems and in some real good order and check and hopefully finish the year positively and so it's something we can take into next year. Well, one big positive I reckon has been very important for your side is the fact that you've been able to take some of those finals contenders and sides that are only just missing outside the five to the real limit. You've taken uh, South Fremantle down to the siren twice. You've taken a couple of other sides right to the limit as well. Was that really the expectation from, uh, from Peter German on your side uh, at, from the outset of the season? Yeah, we always, you know, we set out to you know, as win as many games as possible and um, we've taken some real good steps this year in some some of those games you spoke of um, and tested some of the real good sides and um, like we only only went down to East Freo by three goals I think it was and same with Peel so like we've played some good footy at times it just hasn't been consistently enough and um, with a young group that's what 
our next sort of step is to be able to just play consistently for long enough. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can do that in the next four weeks. Sam, tell us about the life of a of waffle footballer. It's not the most easy uh, sort of job to do because, you know, almost every, almost all the guys have full-time jobs and then, uh, you know, waffle footy takes a lot of commitment. How, how do you balance that and how do you find it? Yeah, it definitely is a, um, you know, a bit of a struggle at times with like training, work, um, getting home after training, having mm-hmm. to cook dinner around 8.30, um, things like that. You're quite often at the club for about four hours at least three times a week. So, um, And then you've got game days and recoveries after that. So, yeah, it is, it is quite a, you know, a big workload, uh, especially with the boys who work full-time. I've been pretty lucky to this year not have to work full-time, which is, um, mm. oh, well, I, I still work full time, but it's not like I have to go to a nine to five job. So I'm lucky in that sense for this year, um, with my social media creator stuff like that. So yep. yeah, that, that's been a, a big sort of a, a real good thing for myself and, but you know, teammates and stuff like that who are on the tools all day from five, six in the morning and then they're coming to training and yeah, get, get to be a real big day and, um, yeah. a big workload. You talked about uh, social media or content creating. When did you start getting into that uh, away from the footy field? Um, yeah, started, I first started during COVID, just a bit of fun. As everyone sort of probably downloaded TikTok and things like that. And, um, <clears throat> it wasn't until probably 2021, uh, December, and I had a bit of time on my hands, posted a few videos, and they sort of just took off and just sort of went from there. Um, so now it's a job, which is pretty lucky. Uh <laughs> Not something I thought I'd be doing, but yeah, sort of just fell into it. Yeah, I bet. I bet if you said that to yourself three years ago, you said, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> Didn't even know it existed. Yeah, yeah, too right. <laughs> oh, fantastic stuff, Sam. It's uh, a great way to uh, you know get the day going, and uh, you know it really makes a lot of people happy. A job well done to you, Sam, and all the best uh, for the game against West Perth. It's going to be an absolute beauty over there at Pentonet Stadium in Joondalup. Could really make one final say on uh, the race for the top five uh, on one of the teams at least. Go get him, Sam. All the very best. Yeah, cheers, guys. Thanks for having me, Sam Stubbs. Great forward of the Perth Football Club. One of the most spectacular forwards and. Hard to believe, you know, social content yeah. creating uh, alongside uh, WA football. Maybe more, more of the players should be getting into that. Yeah, yeah maybe you're right. I, I find that fascinating. Um, it's so demanding, like, yeah. the, the waffle footy. Um, and like what he said about the players, can you imagine being on the tools all day? You know, it's often starting at six, finishing at three or whatever it is, and then going to footy training like you're knackered mm. as it is. So many people get home from their job and just want to, <laughs> flop on the couch and do nothing but these guys have got to go into a full session so it, yeah it was a fascinating insight but it's it's awesome that he's found a little niche that uh he can sort of work around his footy as well which, which is which is cool and you know probably not the worst avenue no. for for waffle footballers as well but no i really really appreciate his time there sam it was a, an interesting insight no, it certainly was and, uh, and that really puts into perspective how important balance is you know between yeah. that work life and you know going to training and, and playing those games as well it's such an important thing for uh, any wafl footballer to really have a look at and any wafl coach that has that same situation yeah footy can be all encompassing uh I, sp- I suppose life can be as well so you've got to have yeah all those different avenues to Keep you sharp and, uh, you know, keep your attention and and performance at, at the peak that it can be. I, I reckon it's, yes, yeah, so important to have, have all avenues covered. Absolutely. Now, just before we go into the preview of round 17, just a reminder, all games are live, free and in full on the AFL app. This is Around the Waffle, Paul Persick and Mark Foreman. Four big games in round 17 for you. Let's get right into it. Swan Districts and South Fremantle first up on Saturday at 2.10 at Steel Blue Oval. Of course, they had a great encounter back in round four. The Swans getting up by 18, but this one's a much different ball game. South Fremantle, they've got to eradicate those last quarter fade-outs because it's been a real detrimental habit for a good side like South Fremantle. They've got some really good players. They started very well in the derby, but just couldn't get it together when it mattered the most in the last. And Swan Districts, they're coming off some good, tight wins at home. They'd be the favourites you think uh, I think you're right and yes they would want to eradicate the fade outs because they're playing a team in Swan Districts who are re- have finished their final quarters really strongly in the last few weeks and um, you know they, they held on against West Coast for a win after the siren the week before that they uh, stormed home against Subiaco so Swan Districts 
playing some really good footy. Uh, and, and yeah, certainly, I, I think when we spoke to, to Bo earlier in the week um, and he sort of mentioned that Swan District's ladder position perhaps isn't reflective of the footy they can play. Um, and yeah, to be honest, the last few weeks has, has been, you know, top five worthy from Swan District. So that they'll be really frustrated at the start they had to the season uh, to have themselves in this position. But, um, you know, all, all they can do is, is play the best footy they can at the moment. And that's what they're doing. And I completely agree. I reckon they're Red hot favourites to take this one out at, at Steel Blue. Yeah, I'm going to say the Swans, uh, this one by about four goals, you'd think. I think they're yep. a four goal better side when you're looking at who they've got, especially in the middle. Jackson McLaughlin, who at the moment, his first season in the league, has already matured into a fine midfielder. So to Jesse Turner, his, uh, his experience continues to blossom. Jarvis Pina, uh, swinging from midfield to half back, you know, gathering plenty of possession and using it effectively. And up forward, I reckon the, the forward line's still a little bit of a worry. You know, because without Chris Jones, you know, they're not getting as much function, as much scoreboard pressure in that forward line. And against a South Fremantle defensive six who are dented severely with a lot of injuries, they're really going to have to step up. Yeah, yeah, they, they will. Um, and Tom Edwards is the one who we've seen a little bit in the, in the last month. You know, he obviously he kicked that goal after the siren. He kicked four against Subi in the last quarter. Yeah. He, he's a player who has, you know, so much potential and, and that X factor for Swans. So... He's one they'll look to, but he's you know a young young bloke can't take all the um, can't take all the responsibility. But uh, from Albany, I think as well, good from Albany, good, yeah, good Royals boy. But um, he he's going to be a really important player for Swan Districts, not only this year, but if you know these remaining four games, but but into the future as well. And I would repeat what South Fremantle did with Brendan Donaldson, swing him up forward and uh, have yeah. him play in tandem with Zach Strom. He, he, he's just much better suited inside the 50, kicking those goals, whether it be on the run or from set shot. You know, solid in the midfield, but doesn't carry the same effect as uh, what he has in that forward line. So if I was the Bulldogs coaching staff, I'd be swinging him up <laughs> forward again. We'll get you in the box, Paul. I'm, oh, I'm not sure about that. I don't have the qualities of Todd Curley, please. <laughs> yeah, look, perhaps. It's um, uh, you know, s swing players are uh, so uh, like invaluable to for, to teams. So to have that at your disposal for um, the South Fremantle coaching staff I is important. But yeah, I reckon the back half of the year they're just going to be looking for you know player development. See see what players can play in what positions because they're obviously not playing a part in finals this year, and and they've certainly underachieved. So. They'll be looking to learn a lot in the back half. Will be a great game, though, over there at Steel Blue Oval. Now, let's go to the game that you're going to be at on Saturday for you at Lane Group Stadium. Sort of the alignment derby, if yeah. you will. Peel Thunder and the West Coast Eagles. And I'm, I'm actually going to say it. I reckon West Coast uh, have a really good chance, especially with the footy that they've played over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I think they've... And, and we it started when the AFL side started to get numbers back, and, and that obviously trickles down into the, into the reserve side. So it's been you know, really pleasing for, uh, and a relief in a way for, for West Coast to get some players back so that they can start trying to string together, you know, some team footy and, and get a bit of uh, continuity in, in what's going on. And and we've seen that. You know, the game against Swans was, it was, it was there. It, it was, was there for them. And they sort of, they sort of lost it in the dying stages. And uh, I, I think winning is habitual. Um and perhaps, a lot, well, not perhaps, a lot of those players don't know how to win because they obviously haven't won a game. I think, what's it been, 20 games in a row or something? Yeah, 20, it? 21 games in a row. But I think it all boils down to, you know, how many numbers have been out injured and yeah. look at the players that they're getting back as well. Yeah. That experience is going to be so important against a side like Pure Thunder, who are keen because they lost in their last hit out to uh, East Perth at home. And very rarely they cop a, a cop, they cop a couple of heavy losses at home. Yeah, and it's yeah f funny how it, things you know trickle and turn in that uh, the Dockers have now got a few injuries to deal with, mm. which means that they lose a few players out of their reserve side too. So uh, they're absolutely not without a chance. West Coast, I I I do think Peel will probably be too strong, but I'm oh, I'm really excited. You've you've got a game where there's plenty of AFL listed players on both sides. Um, I'm expecting to see a game of that quality, um, and yeah, but you know. As far as ladder position goes, Peel are the ones who desperately need to win this. They've got the most to lose because yeah. if they do get beaten somehow by West Coast and West Perth win against Perth, then that race for fifth position is even tighter. Yeah, and, and that's that's when it'll start to get you know hugely concerning for Peel. Um, at the moment, it's it's two games and percentage is their buffer with, what have we got? Four, four, four rounds, rounds to left. go. So um, reasonably comfortable, but exactly right. If they drop a game like this... Um, you'd, you'd expect West Perth to, to beat Perth. 
um, then it's only a game and, and we're starting to talk. Yeah, there's three opportunities remaining in the year for, for that to be overturned. Yeah, I'm still going to say Peel Thunder to win it. I mean, they'll be too much uh, for the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, they've got just more class in the midfield, especially with Blair Bell, who uh, is playing some really good footy. He had the nine tackles in uh, their last hit out a couple of weeks ago. Hayden Matthews is starting to find some form. But also up forward, I reckon, Tregenza, Corey Tregenza, who had a great season in Colts last year and has only been playing league a little more recently. He'll really start to develop as a blossom mature forward for that Peel Thunder League side. So they'll hold the key for a Peel Thunder win on Saturday. Now, this is a big one. 240 at the Wacker on Saturday. And that's going to be live on Channel 7 as well. East Fremantle and Claremont. They met in a cracker last year on that very ground and expecting another over there at the Wacker between two hotly competitive teams. And I'd have to say the side under the most pressure is Claremont. They've now dropped to fourth. They've got a win to stay in the hunt for the double chance now. I can hear the excitement in your voice, Paul. Oh, it's a huge game. Yeah. It is a massive game. I'd say this is an early final. <laughs> this is an early final. Simmer, simmer. Got a couple of days before it's upon us. Oh, I, come on, mate. I don't want you losing sleep. Um, <laughs> this is exciting because we're, we're very confused about what Claremont is doing. Um, you know, they, they had that loss to West Perth at home and uh, they were in such a strong position and then sort of dropped a couple. Um, and so... Look, expect to see a response. There is, has to be. Yeah, is is that? It's the only way you can sort of look at it. They, they're not going to be happy with what's been going on, and uh, but up against the side that's flying. Um, and so you're right. Your excitement is valid, Paul. I just don't want you to lose too much sleep leading oh, up to the game. I won't lose too much <laughs> sleep. You know me. I'm always pumped up on game day, especially for this one. Now, if, you, if you're looking at the sides on paper. East Fremantle have a bit of a ledger. Even though they've got a few injury concerns, there is a chance that Milan Murdoch could return. There is also a chance Dylan O'Reilly Dylan could return this week or the game in round 18 against East Perth at the Wacker. So there's a lot of a couple of players, a couple of really good players coming back into that side that could do the world of good for East Fremantle. Claremont, I reckon Ashley Prescott will be expecting, not expecting, but demanding a response from his side after the last two weeks because they blew it in the last quarter against East Perth. They let that game slip. And then they just couldn't keep up with the ramp at West Perth and enforce their fir their first loss at home. So they need to respond quickly against an East Fremantle side that will be buoyed by the big win over their Archtown rivals last weekend. Yeah, for sure. Not a good time of year to start losing games. Mm. And, and we've you know we've seen their drop in the ladder um, and, and now putting themselves in serious danger of, of missing that double chance, which is, as you said, which is why this game is critical. When, you, when you're playing teams, like you almost want to be playing teams that are at the top because yeah. it is in your hands. Like you, you're not relying on other results. Pretty simple for Claremont. You win, you, you leapfrog them. You pretty much consolidate your, your top, uh, your double chance. So uh, you're right. That's exactly what um, Prescott would be demanding. And yeah, it, it's all about the start. We saw uh, last week, with uh, Subiaco starting so strongly against East Perth, you, you jump a team and you're playing catch up, um, you know, for the rest of the game, and it's bloody hard to play catch up footy. So, um, yeah, it'll be a hot start. Certainly will be. Certainly will be. Who wins? Uh, uh, I'm going to go Claremont. You're going to go Claremont. I am going to go Claremont. Expecting them to bounce back. Yeah, because I'm confused. I'm not sure what's happening. I don't think the Claremont we've seen in the previous two weeks is is the actual Claremont, and so I'm I'm going to pick them to respond. I'll say they'll respond, but they won't win the game. Okay. I'm going to say East Fremantle, but it only be. I'd love to see it by a point. I reckon it's going to be a point. I'm, it? I'm excited to recap this next week. Right down to the <laughs> siren. I can't wait okay. as well. I can't wait for that one. It's going to be a beauty. If you've predicted correctly an after the siren shot at goal or something, that is that's Nostradamus like, and I will take. I'll take your word for the rest of the year. I'll just, um, I'm, I'll not, just follow I'm not your sure tips. to be after the siren. You know, anything can happen, but I'd love to see an after the siren goal. Yeah. But uh, who knows? Anything can happen in a great game of footy, and it usually does. We've had a couple of those this year in the waffle, haven't we? Certainly think, have. Well, yeah. Tom Edwards has had two himself. Yeah, but at least he got a major to redeem himself yeah, from earlier yeah, this yeah. season after the one against Subiaco. Uh, just, yeah, but I mean, it shows you how, how, how well the waffle's going, and, and to have close finishes like that's awesome. So hopefully we get one this game. It is awfully good, make no mistake about that. <laughs> then the final game, Saturday, 2.40 at Penn. Internet Stadium, West Perth and Perth. Now, West Perth, they don't want to be taking Perth too lightly. Uh, no, and uh, and I'm sure they won't because West Perth are, are clearly... It, so they're playing good footy and I think it's just going to be a case of, you know, sending that, the, uh, sending that message and sending the troops out there to do exactly what they've been doing. Um, and if they play the way they have been, they're now playing a, you know... A, a, you know all due respect, they're playing a lesser team in Perth who have, have really not had the season they'd hoped for. 
And if they, if West Perth play the footy they've been playing, that, that could be slightly ugly. Now, especially with West Perth ramping up the pressure on the ball carrier as well, that was a real contrasting improvement to what has been you know, pretty poor from the Falcons for the majority of the season. The pressure on the ball carrier and their accuracy in front of goal and their connectivity in that forward line too, which was a huge, huge step up in that win over Claremont at Revo Fitness Stadium, no less. They have to back it up at home and especially against a side that they have beaten 22 of the last 23 games in. <laughs> West Perth have had the wood over the Demons in recent years. It's incredible when I read that. And, um, you know, it, it's just like the South Fremantle, East Fremantle thing. It, you know, it will play. It, it, it plays a factor when you, when you are that dominant over that uh, period of time, um, you know, it's, it's got to play in your mind. But uh, you're right, the pressure on the ball carrier, it's been, they've been good all over the ground. So that with the mids applying pressure on the ball carrier, it's made life easy for the West Perth defenders because the ball's entering their D50 in a you know, chaotic and pressured way that it, it just helps out your defenders no end. So um, they've, you know, the defenders have stood up with the help of the midfielders and, and the forwards seem to st- starting to be click, uh, start to be clicking. So, um, they'll just, yeah, be looking to continue that. But unfortunately for West Perth, it's a case of hoping for other results now as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Fate is out of their own hands. Well, yep. un- unless Peel Thunder somehow lose to West Coast on that same day, then fate will partially be in their hands yeah. as well, but still have to rely, obviously, on other results. Perth, on the other hand, Thompson, Avery and Corley, they've been those midfield pillars, but they need the backup. They've got to find a way to really click with the midfield depth that they've got on paper. Because on paper, it's a good side, but they just haven't really clicked with a lot of support from other midfielders as well. They've solely relied on them to get the service towards their 450. Yeah, and, and you know, with only a month to go, and we spoke to Sam Stubbs as well, it's just about getting the development and getting that connection with, uh, you know, what they've got out on the park um, and, and working towards next year. That is, it's really all you can do, you know. And uh, as well as that, you try and get that winning feeling. Um, everyone's playing footy to have wins and, and share them with your mates. So hopefully for Perth's sake, they can uh, sneak a couple in the, in the back half of the year and or well, the back, very back half of the year and, um, you know, cause a stir in that top five. But yeah, to get the winning feeling, you know, amongst the group will be really important for them moving forward next year. Who wins? Uh, West Perth. West Perth wins easily. Yeah, I'll say West Perth. Yeah, West Perth as well, but maybe by about five goals. But I expect Perth to put in a decent effort. You know, they've got a good side on paper, but West Perth, at the way, after they, you know, really towed up Claremont with the way that they played, I expect them to do the same thing against Perth. Oh, look, I hope I hope so. I hope Perth put out a good performance. They're, you know, they're a proud club and they've, they've sort of been under siege recently, but um, there is hope there. And, and, you know, we know Peter German's a good coach. He, he'll get the best out of, uh, out of that group. But um, yeah, you just want continual development and, and you want something to hang your hat on. So it's it's been sad to see Perth, you know, travelling the way they have been. But, um, you know, hopefully there's a bit of an upward upward tick. But West Perth will be too strong for them as, as they look to keep their finals hopes alive. It's going to be a big round 17. Can't wait for it. Finals implications riding on a lot of these games, particularly that one at the Wacker. For it, great job from you as always, mate. See you next Tuesday. Thanks, Paul. Looking forward to it. And we thank you, our listeners and viewers, for tuning in to another episode of Around the Waffle, the official podcast of the West Australian Football League. And if you can't get to a game, all games are live, free and in full on the AFL app. And also a reminder, we've got socials, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Give us a big thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. And we look forward to your company next Tuesday when we review the huge round 17 of the WAF. See you soon.